Hey, it's Friday. Welcome back to the Exponential Files. We've got a great show. I'm Larry Lauper, and uh, our host today is Jim Lowenstern. As always, um, the Exponential Files is a show about real estate with EXP agents. We bring you the best and the brightest. And today we have both uh, Michelle and Eddie Shack from North Carolina. Welcome to the show, guys. Hey, guys. Oh, thank How you for doing? having us. Thank you. So, uh, yeah, it's it's great to have you here. Um, now, we had a little bit of a pre-interview, as we always do, and we found out that uh, the laws of attraction are part of what drives your business. Being friendly, being uh, wearing, oh, I put this on for you. I'm wearing a real estate thing. <laughs> there you go. Love it, love it. Uh, so I am not a secret agent, but, to, but talk about uh, how you built your business over all of these years. Okay. Um, and yeah, the, we kind of went over this morning, Law of Attraction. I still have The Secret and several uh, um, high energy books on our desk. We read usually weekly and putting the positive energy out there. Um, how we create and keep our business is through marketing, of course, but also we have a belief system that you need to let everyone know out there that you're a real estate broker. You need to, whether you're at a, a grocery store, at the gym, no matter where you're at, wear yourself a real estate shirt or a hat, talk with people about real estate, no real estate. You'll never sell real estate if no one knows you're a real estate broker. It's just right. the bottom line. Right. So I think that's the most important thing. Get yourself out there. Yeah. And I also think for us too, we're true to who we are. Um, so we are really down to earth, outgoing, uh, completely tattooed, uh, military kind of family in the background. Um, so when we go out, we, we talk about those things. So we're just not, you know, trying to sell and, you know, real estate to somebody. We're actually having genuine conversations about life and getting to know people. And I think that's how we really built our, our business and our sphere is now everybody knows us. And, uh, we moved up to the mountains and we knew some people up here and now everybody knows us. So the transition from the mountains to the coast, that's kind of um, our logo. Um, we do that. We travel seven hours down to the coast or back up to the mountains um, and everybody knows us and, and knows what the, we do. And one of the biggest thing that people will say to us is we like using you guys because you don't feel like a high pressured salesman. You don't feel like a car salesman. You feel like real people that understand the market and real estate. And we want to use you because we just don't want to feel like you're going to be hammering us to buy this or sell this. You let us do it at our own pace. And that's the whole objective. It has to, we always said when we started this, we did a marketing term and it said making real estate fun. Okay. And it should be fun. It shouldn't be stressful. It shouldn't be painful. It, you know, it should be fun. So, so let's, let's talk about if there are any pain points, because a seven mile round, uh, excuse me, a seven hour round trip from one end of your Yep. geographic coverage area to the other that how, how do you how do you handle that amount of geography um we energy look, drinks <laughs> <laughs> we look we look at it as actually a road trip so i remember yeah. when we first did it did that um an agent said oh my god i would never travel seven hours and we're like that's a weekend road trip for us we'll go do that meet some great clients uh get a great commission out of it um, and just enjoy the area. And that's what we do. We look at it as more as um, we're going down to see old friends. We're going to meet new clients. Uh, just get out of the area. And it's a road trip for us. You're hustling. And, yeah. and, and you know, a lot of the real estate, I'm not, I'm not putting people down by any means. Everyone's got their own game. But a lot of it's people true. don't hustle anymore. And my thing is if I can drive seven hours and do a $500,000 sale on a house and get a great commission and also create a relationship and a friendship with someone, um, for future leads, why would I not do that? Yeah. You know, so so yeah. you're you're scheduling. Obviously, a, a broker calls you and says, "Hey Ed, I, I need to get in that house in an hour. Can you meet me there?" And it's seven hours to drive there. That's we not call one of our yeah. We we'll call say, one of our peers and just say, "Hey, yeah. we'll get you into it. Let me make a couple phone calls." We have right. people everywhere, so if we have to do that, and then we just commit. We just refer it out. Yeah. Okay, so, I, so this is where question. the EXP network and oh, connecting on workplace and everything workplace helps drive your business. 
Yeah. Absolutely. It's fantastic. Our, the EXP referral network is Absolutely. one of the best the I've chart. ever. Yeah. I, yeah. I can, we can literally say that we have agents in 50 states and overseas and we yeah. truly do. Yeah. Um, it's been fantastic for us, uh, both referring out and receiving referrals. And on a side note, we probably got a half dozen referrals we're working on right now yeah. with referrals from the referral network. Yeah. We do Georgia, North Carolina, we're in Florida, you know, we go into the luxury. So we post all of our listings all over the place. We get a ton of people hitting us up. And I think that, you know, building that is a big thing. Having other agents know, we have agents coming to us now going, hey, Eddie, Michelle, I got an investor. Can you help them out? Yeah, of course we can. Yeah. So I think that's pretty big, to be honest yeah. with you. Yeah, I, I, I think that understanding that the world is small, much smaller than people think, and being yeah. nice to everyone uh, will bring you business. Uh, talking about real estate. Everybody has a question about a real estate. Everybody lives somewhere, needs yep. to live somewhere, is going to live somewhere else. And it's one of the simplest conversations, but the difference between a simple conversation and an intelligent conversation, knowing the market is a very di different thing. And people pick that up right away. And Larry, Absolutely. I agree with you. You know, what I, what I always tell people, especially if they're hesitant to, to buy into an investment property, I say the one thing you need in life the one thing you need in life before you can do anything is a place to live, whether you rent or your own. So why would you not be involved in real estate? And they go, well, what about the stock market? And I go, well, do you got $250,000, $300,000 to invest in it? Because no one's going to give you a loan for that. But yeah. you can leverage some money and go ahead and buy an investment property and have someone else pay it down for you. That is still the best investment in the world. Right. So. It's pretty, it's pretty basic for us, but it's not for everyone, you know? I, I always say food, shelter, and clothing. Everyone needs those. We're number two on that hit parade. We're yeah, shelter. what about naked and afraid? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and no we're, the basis, we're the basis of the economy. People yeah. who own homes pay taxes. They uh, buy oh. get things. They drive cars that are in their backyard or in their driveway. Uh, real estate is the basis of everything. And you get to write off all your interest, your property taxes, your insurance, right. basically everything on it. So you're not really paying anything. As right. long as you have a good rental setup, whether it's long or short, you can make your residuals and your passive income and you'll have a tax reduction as well. It's a great, great aspect. Well, so, one of so the aspects of your business is is the Airbnb stuff or or the rentals. Is that where you were going, Jim? Yeah. yeah that was the question. Yeah. So, um. Yeah, Airbnb, VRBO, Booking.com, TripAdvisor. When we set up a client or ourselves on a new property, all the calendars on those sites link together. So the reason why we do, you know, these people are like, hey, why do you use all of them? Well, not everyone uses Airbnb. Some people use Verbo. Some people like TripAdvisor. Right. So why don't you get out and get to everyone? So that way you can get more bookings. I think the objective is, is we're trying to make money. So get in front of everyone. Right. And all the calendars link together. So if I get a booking on Airbnb, it goes ahead and books across the board on VRBO, TripAdvisor, because all the calendars link together. It's a syncing system. Yeah, so we, we did long term for a really long time, and we moved down to the coast. We found um, a niche for that, and we noticed that a lot of people were doing short term rentals. So we decided we had this three thousand square foot home with a six hundred square foot like mother in law suite, and we're like, well, let's give that a try. And it had no kitchen. But we put a small little kitchen in there, things like that. Uh, we made twenty five thousand the first year on a six hundred square foot little mother in law underneath our house. With no so kitchen. with no kitchen. So then we said, okay, that's when we need to buy another beach bungalow because some, you know, obviously this is working. And so we did that and bought a 1960, 1969 little beach bungalow and uh, started doing that and uh, the remodel 30 day remodel yeah, and we did about 60,000 that first year so then we said okay this is really where this niche is especially on the different. coast and we just started to buy invest do short term rentals and then we noticed that there was a lot of other uh, investors or friends that we knew and other people that got referred to us that wanted to do the same thing so that's kind of how that started with us and why we now, I wouldn't say we train people on it, um, but a lot of people are afraid. Yeah, we educate. They're they're afraid to do it on their own. Oh, we're just going to use a property management company. What Let if we fail? You know? 
So we or actually help happens. them. Yeah. And, uh, you know, we want all of our clients to be successful. So, um, and they're doing a great job of that. So when, when did you start that? Well, what year was that? We did that. We started in- Here's our mascot, Whiskey. <laughs> Hi, Whiskey. <laughs> it's uh, on, it, it, it is Corby? Friday. Uh, yeah. It's an uh, Australian Shepherd. He's the EXP mascot. He's a service dog. So he has his little- his little um, Velcro thing on his thing that says the EXP mascot. So he goes everywhere with us. You want to come up um, we started in 2018. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yep. When we so Airbnb was, was definitely a thing by 2018. Well, we, we'd, we'd been doing real estate and investing and flipping. We had probably brought a total of 30 homes prior to that um, on our own, just doing investing. And so we just said, hey, let's get our real estate license and do it. We icon the first year. We've been icon ever since four years in a row. We ended up on Real Producers Magazine, um, ended up on Beachfront Bargain Hunt. They came in, uh, looked us over, and she did a great job on that show. Um, so, you know, it's, I think when you love what you do and you educate yourself, a lot of people say, you know, just like you asked, you know, how do you get business? How are you guys so busy all the time? And it's like, because we put it out there. You put it out in the universe. We love what we do. We, we, every day I wake up first thing in the morning, I'm having coffee and I'm looking at the stock market. I'm looking at what interest rates are doing. I'm looking at new properties coming on the market. I'm looking how much is in inventory. And today you were looking at which bank failed. <laughs> oh, California, right? So, um, exactly. So, and there's a lot of stuff going on out there, right? But you know, today the, the long, the, the long-term interest rates dropped about a quarter percent. So that's a good thing. We're seeing a little droppage there. They were down under 6% probably about 30 days ago. So maybe we'll get back down to the fives and that would spark this market like you'd never seen. Yeah. Well, that's, that's the other question. So where are we in this market versus a year ago with activity and pent up demand and shortages of inventory? So many Parts of this market have been dislocated yeah. by the interest rates for, for one thing and uh, inflation. We've we've seen uh, we've seen a change, but weirdly enough, the state that we live in, especially well, North Carolina, Georgia, South Carolina, but specifically North Carolina and Georgia, they are still a very we have a shortage of homes, but it's very it's still a hot market. We have people coming from still New Jersey and New York and California and Pennsylvania, Colorado, yeah. Pennsylvania, yeah. and they're all coming to North Carolina and Georgia. So we actually have like 10 buyers that we can't find properties for because they want to move here, but we do have that shortage um, or properties are still in multiple um, offer situations. So they can't, they're not quick enough to get on the draw to, to get a property. So, um, I know some other states have been hit really hard, but for us, we knock on wood, we've been really um, thankful yeah. for that because I think we're in a state where well, a lot of people are still moving to. A desirable state. Yeah. I mean, you got to figure property tax in New York on some houses are sixteen, twenty, thirty thousand dollars a year. You know, property taxes on this beautiful ranch house we live in right here, which is a half million dollar house, are about eighteen hundred dollars a year. Well, that right there is huge. That's that's that motivates people to leave their state and get over here. Gas prices are three dollars a gallon over here. Yep. Your only issues right now is the inventories that's and it. the cost to build a property right now. The labor force is really bad. It's very expensive. Materials are expensive. So you cannot build a home for what you can buy it existing. It's kind of like the first time in this mar in, in any market that we've had that where you can actually buy an existing house cheaper than you can build it. And that's a big change. So the only people that are building right now um, are builders that have a lot of materials in stock and they can buy it at a, right. at, a, at a low rate because they're buying mass quantities. Those are the builders that can still do it. And we're looking at 275 to 350 a square foot right now when you can buy a house for 200 a square foot, you know, 250 if it's a really nice house in these areas. Right. But that's an existing house that probably needs some work. Correct. Possibly. Yeah. Possibly. It just depends because there's some stuff out there that obviously needs some work, but there's also some newer stuff that comes on the market that, you know, that needs minor work. Um, 
so yeah, it's, and, it's, and it's there's always people who take care of their their place. And you want yeah, to buy those I mean, houses. it's a give and take. Yeah. I mean, you're right. I mean, there's some there's some crap houses out there. We know that, guys. I mean, yeah. but you know, those are the houses that you might get at 120 a square foot or 150. You go in there and do a remodel, do some sweat equity, and then bam, yeah. you got some money sitting there because you put some money into it. Yeah. Um, and if you can do it yourself, like we do, you that can. You can. Manage. Yeah. I mean, we remodeled this whole property. So, uh -huh. so the name of your team is Shaq. Hunters, that's sort of tongue in cheek, or well, our last name is Shack. <laughs> so you know, our first beach property was the Tiki Shack, and the second uh, short term rental was the Sea Shack, and we're Shack hunters. And uh, it just kind of rolled because people were like, "That's great, hunters like Shack hunters," because the Shack could be a home. Yep. So we just ran with that, and uh, we. We've just got really good feedback from that. We've done some funny, funny stuff like Love Shack, you know what I mean? Have a home right there with hearts coming out of it. It just, it really, people like grasp to it, you know, in a weird way. Right, right. So, and it's easy but, to remember. But remember, how often do people spell your name correctly? They never That's, get it. They, do, they don't. They never get it. You know that. You know, <laughs> I do. I do. Every I had there. to check it when I wrote up this thing before we started here. Yep, yep. But, so. you know, you want to pick a name or a group name that people are going to remember. And if it's one of those hard names or kind of a weird name, you know, you might not remember it, but Shack Hunters is kind of catchy. So it works, you know, and yeah. I think House Hunters kind of help that and everything else, you know, that they, they got like a name brand name out there. Who so. are you going to call? Who are you going to call? call? Yep. Oh Shack. my gosh. And, and I, and you're funny because I did a whole video on that. Who are you going to call? Shack Hunters. We, we, did we that, almost did that whole. We did that about a year ago for marketing. <laughs> so that's some funny stuff. <laughs> People yep. like so What do you humor. like about EXP? Were you ever with a, a real estate company before EXP? Yeah. We were with a Caldwell Banker. We started um, a year there and uh, nothing bad to say about no. them. We uh, know the president very well down in at the seacoast and at the coast. Um, but I think EXP had a lot more to offer. Um, they're more geared to that agent owned where you kind of own your own business. You can run it. There's uh, no overhead for them. Um, stock options, stock options, referral group, yeah. the workplace. There are so many things that I, I mean, can't say anything that they have elevated above other real estate brokers, like your Keller Williams and Caldwell. I mean, even the referral program, you know, none of these other companies have anything like that out there. I mean, it, it's amazing what they do. The stock options were huge with us. I mean, you got to figure you do $3 million in sales and you go from 80 to hundred percent, you go at icon and you basically get all that money back into stock options. Who does that? I mean, this company is amazing when it comes to that. Well, I just so like, the, oh, go ahead. So I was just going to say with the stock awards, so you get half of, half of what you paid in right up front. Yeah. Are you part of a, a mentoring program and yeah. do you do... We do yeah. mentoring, we yeah. go to the events, and then you get the rest of the residuals. Yeah. You know, you roughly, I think you get 12,000 right from the start, and then you can get a couple thousand for going to events. We mentor people. We've yeah. got mentors right now. So we also get residuals off of that. Okay. Yep. I just so. realized, Michelle, that your middle name is MR. That's that's French for love. So you are yeah. Love Shack. Yeah. Well, truly, yep. yes. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Love Shack. Yeah. Isn't that great? That's funny. My parents were a little, little lost in the seventies, I think, but now it works out great. So. <laughs> Not a great song, but it was a great time. So well, it was a great song. What are you kidding me? B-52s. Yeah, B-52s, absolutely. Uh, we differ on music, but that's, you know, everybody's, that's why everybody has an opinion. Right. Yep. Yep. And, um, and I think you guys know, we got a pretty cool beach build going on right now. We, uh, We've we've got cabins that we're building up in the mountains right now. We've got a lot right here on Lake Chatouge that we're building, a lake talk, house. Here. Talk about the properties that, that you have available. In, in the so we're excited about um, the beach property. That's a, a high-end property. It's a, it's a new style for the North Carolina coast or even this East Coast. It was more uh, based out of a California-style build. And the builds here in North Carolina, and, you know, they're, they don't – what I call this build is from being in the inside out. Um, and that means there's a ton of deck space. There's a, a deck on the roof. So you can literally enjoy the ocean and the breeze where a lot of the decks on these uh, houses here in North Carolina, they're small and you can't really enjoy them as much as you'd like. So we've got a massive amount of deck space. There's huge windows and huge doors. 
three sliders that you can open up. So it opens up right to the ocean. I think that's a big selling point right there. Mm -hmm. We bought a, a lot on the beach down there. We got the build going. Um, Thompson Build is building it. He's a, a high-end builder. He's an architect builder. And uh, and we're very excited about this. It's a one- So are those tied project. into uh, sewer or, or is that septic? Nope. It's uh you got city water and city um it's sewer, sewer yeah. there on that island for the beach. So most of the islands don't have septic systems, as you can imagine. Why? Um, those things leak into the ocean or anything else. It's a problem. So they want to make sure that they get pipe in there and it's all very secure, um, so they don't have any leakage. And, and what about past storms? Uh, how has that affected the area? Uh, no. Uh, the North Carolina coast is a little different than Florida. Florida gets hammered. Um, it's just on that finger that sticks out there and gets nailed. Um, obviously, North Carolina and South Carolina, Georgia, they've all been hit a little bit. Um, we were here when Florence hit and hit Carolina Beach, Cary Beach. We've got, we had to get escorted off the island. We had to go stay in a hotel for two weeks. Well, weirdly enough with that, we had Renner staying in one of our cat, uh, in our houses and they were closing the bridge and making everyone evacuate they and they wouldn't leave. And they're like, we want to stay. I'm like, you can't stay. And so we had to actually escort them off because they would have been stuck on the island. But it didn't slow down. After Florence, we were completely booked after yep. that. And the storms, you know, I think when you live on the East Coast and you live on the beach, you're not afraid of the hurricanes. You pick up, right. you rebuild. Yep. That's why you have insurance. Um, everybody still wants to come. Oh, the hurricane hit here. Wrightsville Beach, that's where the... Um, the eye landed Wrightsville beach was super popular not it was super popular now but everyone wanted to come because oh the hurricane landed there so that didn't stop nope our vacation rental or it's always bill. a concern but at the end of the day that's why you have insurance you know um if you have to rebuild you rebuild um that's just the way it goes you know so do you and have a group have of builders and architects and uh, because you're yep. building in different areas? And I know builders, they're not moving around unless they're corporate builders and they're all over the country. Yeah, yeah Thompson, so Thompson Build does the coast properties. For us. Um, and then we work with um, two different developers up here in the mountains. Um, they're cabin builders. And so they do their general contract five, five cabins at a time. They'll move on, uh, purchase some more lots, do another five kind of cabins that way. Um, so you got like a five acre parcel. They break it into one acre uh, lots and they build basically 1100 square foot, two bedroom, two bath cabins, all log cabins, all, log, all wood interior, tongue and groove pine, just beautiful properties. And those babies right there rent out like there's no tomorrow. The Floridians come over to these cabins in herds um they're like you know we're, we're flatlanders we're on the beach we want to get to the mountains so and the one thing great about these mountains is is you got lakes rivers you've got the fall events you have everything biking. you got hiking biking tra biking trails you've got fly fishing you've got river rafting you've got zip lines it's a mecca they've got the tail of the dragon for bikers to come up here and do um fall events they got helen georgia it's it's uh, a there's a lot going on up here. Microbreweries. Um, I know there's a lot of those. <laughs> microbreweries, yes. Yeah. Burger, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Gourmet burgers and microbreweries. Right. So, right, yeah. right, right. One hundred percent, real popular. What is that clear stuff? Uh, it's known moonshine. in the south. Moonshine, yeah. There's uh, moonshiners yes. up there, and then Mapital Appalachians. Appalachian Mountains, actually, yes. And actually, Eddie's going to our refrigerator so he can pull out a bottle for you guys <laughs> to show us. It is Friday. Uh, it's, I, it's twelve. It's five o'clock somewhere, I think. So. Right. Well, <laughs> no, uh, we don't drink. We're not going to drink any of it, but this is how it comes. Yes. Yeah, <laughs> I know this. You got some what, peach and strawberry. What is the, the only one I've had is uh, peach. What yep. is that one? We've got uh, a peach right here. You can tell because it's got the P. Yeah. And, and then apple. And then the summer, the guys will make a banana and strawberry. So. Ooh, I want some of that. So it's funny. Uh, you go down to the local place and we got a guy down there that makes it. And he'll, you'll go out and basically the back of his truck, he'll like say, well, what flavor do you want? And 25 bucks later, you got yourself a, a bottle of moonshine. How long? Uh, how long? I mean, how much? 25 bucks. 25, 25, 25 bucks. Yeah. That so, seems... but it's good stuff. People love it. Um, we have it just, and, uh... and none of it goes to the revenueer. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, give a bottle to your clients, and they love it. 
they do actually. <laughs> you know, so so how much are those cabins, and and how much is uh, the beach uh, property? The beach property is listed for one point one five. Yep, one point five um, million. Do you have two on the beach? Or we have one? one on the beach being built now. Once we're buying another lot, which will do a similar build. Um, this just went up for sale. So as soon as this goes under contract, we'll start another build. Yep. yep. And then the cabins, they're uh, a two two, uh, about a thousand square foot, and those are starting out at three nineteen. Yep. And then they can go up from there depending on if they, you know, want to add a garage to it if they want, or we have another. Uh, one of the parcels is uh, over two acres. So um, if they they can go a little bit bigger on the house and then it just goes up from there. And that's a great thing because if you think about it, guys, not everyone has a million one to go make, you know, because he's they do the, the million one house there on the Beach Oak Island will do 120 to 150 a year in short term rentals. All and that's day being long. very conservative. You know, that's now, is that net after all the expenses or is that yep. before expenses? Yeah. Yep. That's if it. you run it yourself off Airbnb and VRBO, if you get to take property management group, they're going to pull 25, 30%. Right. Obviously that's going to take out from your passives and your profit. Um, you'll have your cleaning fees, but those are worked into your Airbnb and VRBO. So you just add those in there. So what you're getting paid is your nightly fee. It gets directly deposited in your bank. So you can do some heavy duty. Um, so what would those rent? What would, what would the, uh, the, the high season, Nightly BB, or do you rent it by the week? Seven nine nine a night. Yep. So they do seven nine nine. If you got a four bedroom, two and a half bath, you'll do seven ninety nine a night, and you'll. But you're not going to just rent it Friday and Saturday night, right? No, 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 no. At least a week. We do during the on season. We'll do um, a minimum of five days, um, and then if for some reason there's like a three day in between, we adjust the calendars because I'd rather make. Seven ninety nine a night times three times three, then not make anything. And that's right. the great thing about managing it yourself, where a lot of the property management companies they don't do that. They'll just keep it on your weekly rental for the doesn't summer. Matter, five days you don't rent it. And so that's the great thing about using those platforms and really managing uh, your property yourself. And that means from June first to September thirtieth. We'll, we'll rent get, out almost 30 days a month. Yeah. You, at, at about seven. If there's two days in between, you just open up those two days yeah. and they'll get rented out yep. because the beaches just get so packed, yeah. you know, with people. Um, the mountain houses, it's it's kind of nice because you got not everyone's got the 1.1 million, but you a lot of people can leverage, you know, 300,000. And these cabins are doing 38, 40,000 a year in short-term rental. That's a great, great amount money. of passive income for a $300,000 property. Plus, you got to get away home, somewhere to get away to. And the equity earned over time up here is amazing as well, because all these uh, areas are growing and expanding dramatically. So that's also a, a great added benefit to it. Yeah. So do the banks that you work with uh, count that income, uh, you know, for approving the loan? You can, it, you have to have two years of vacation rental yep. in order for the income to be. Um, okay, so it has to have some it. kind so you of. Your lending. You're talking about for using it as residual income. Some for history. Yeah. So a new construction, yeah. they're not going to count. For long term, it's different. For short term, it's different. So yeah. for long term, as long as you have a lease in place, so I could buy a property tomorrow. And if it shows I have a lease on my property for $2,000 a month and I can shoot that over to the lender, you I can, can use, use, I think it's 85% of that for a loan. Right. Short-term rental, you're going to have to show two years of income in order to use that for lending. It's it's okay. amazing. It's, it sounds like you've really got it going on. How will people get in touch with you um, if they're looking for a, a rental in the beach or up in the mountains? How do we get in touch with you? Uh, they can email us at Shack Hunters. They can just punch in Shack Hunters. We'll pop up on every site from Facebook to Twitter, Instagram. Instagram. We have our um, we have the page that she created, which is Shack Hunters Realty, and you can hit that, and it'll pop into our site. You can see all of our listings and the areas we work. Um, or you can always just reach out and call us at nine one zero three five eight eight zero five nine. And uh, right. for those who might not be able to spell shack, it's S C H A A C K. Yep. That's right. right at the bottom, right there. Yeah, yeah, in your name. It, it's been a real pleasure 
to have you both. Uh, I can see why you're doing so uh, so well down there. Uh, well, thanks for thank being part. Thanks for being here with the show. Join us next week for another great show, another great uh, um, insight into real estate. Thanks, Jim. Thanks. Thank you, Larry. Thanks for coming. Great having you. See you guys soon. Bye, guys.